Uh, hey guys, this is Dave, and this is a recording of an Instagram Live that I did a couple days ago of the production for Gable Price and Friends' Magnetic Love. Uh, so I just take you through the Pro Tools session, the keys stuff that I did, some of the other production elements, and I hope you enjoy. Uh, put any comments or questions in the comments. Thanks. So this is the the session for um, for Magnetic Love. This is the literal, well, that stuff at the top I I added for this video. But this, what you see right now is literally what I... Um, what I was working with, what I um, gave to the mixing engineer, Aaron Broman. He's the one who's doing our our new album, which by the way, um, if you haven't seen, we are, I'm pretty sure we're making the announcement at 12 today, which is now. Uh, we are dropping another single this Friday uh, called Communion. It's with Mark Barlow. Um, so not only should you check him out, he's from Isla Vista Worship, but you should check out um, our band page, Gable Price and Friends. Um, just for updates on that, it'll be out on Friday. So we're really stoked. But anyway, let's just hop into it. So this is, um, which I thought it'd be fun today because this one's in Pro Tools, as you can see. Um, and uh, oh, it looks like my my camera is kind of cut off a little bit. So I'm just going to move it just a touch. Bloop. All right. How do I do this? Still kind of new to all of this. Um uh, there we go. Boom. All right. Sorry about that. <clears throat> anyway, last time I did a, uh, I did one in Ableton. This time I'll be doing, um, uh, it in, uh, Pro Tools, which will be fun. So, um, so what we started with was, let me make sure we're getting audio too. Yeah. So we started with just this, literally just the vocal. Um, like a fly to a light because I knew that they wanted uh, keys kind of carrying the first goes. verse. So this is not a pre-chorus. You pull me in. And then um, into the chorus as well, literally just vocal. And then verse two. Here's verse two. And I am found. So this is, you know, drums were tracked. I think these were the final guitars and maybe final bass. But basically, they just sent me this this uh, this reference track right here. Um, and this is what I wrote to. Um, and I still remember the day that Adam came over uh, to, I was living in a different house at the time, and we just found all of these sounds in... Um, most of them have become so iconic to the the magnetic love sound and the Gable Price and Friends sound, which I'm super proud of, and I love that. So let's get into it. Let's start with so obviously in the intro we've got a couple things going on, uh, a lot of ambience, a lot of weirdness, and just cool stuff. So we've got yeah, so like this intro pad is what's carrying it most of the way, and it's just an omnisphere. Um. Goody. Oh, he's cutting something. Awesome. <laughs> so it's called fan phasey uh, granulated organ. And it sounds Body. like I'm going to take that out. Originally there was a potential for like a down chorus in the beginning, but we just wanted kind of like an intro swelly kind of crazy. And that's what it dies down into. And then it just drones through the first verse. Wow, he's really going in on the sauce. So sorry, guys. <laughs> um, not a problem, though. And then we have uh, that little intro arp that comes in that's also very magnetic love, very characteristic. It is... I don't actually know what it is. I think it's a... It's actually a reason thing, so I can't pull it up right now just because this. I made this session a year ago, and this is honestly the first that I... Uh, the first that I am... Um, opening it since then but so we've got our little intro pad thing it's this omnisphere guy very cool what am i doing to it um some filter automation so it's slowly opening up and then we have this melody this guy come in he's got some filter automation as well and then as soon as that verse hits and gable starts singing um yeah that's on we have our bass come in. Um, it's pretty standard, just uh, 
sub bass um, sounds like this. Also, I'm remembering that Instagram Live is not stereo, and so I'm just sorry. But I will be uh, posting this on uh, just like Instagram TV, maybe my YouTube as well, and so you'll get to hear some of the stereo goodness. But so this this uh, this bass comes in. It's just an Omnisphere. It's a go-to bass of mine. It's called Clip Signs Bass, and then it's just got a steady eighth note pulse in it. <laughs> It's just huge. It's just filling out that bottom end, a little bit of rhythm. And then at the top of that verse, we also have this like little bell arp. It's kind of bouncing. I'm sending it to a delay. So it's just kind of adding to that ambience. And then with the intro pad, which is just droning the six, they're both kind of droning the six at this point. Yeah, just really textural. Really nice. I love that. And then this, our original melody is going, just creating energy throughout the verse, right? I'm gonna try to leave the reference track in, but just turn it down so there's kind of context for where we're at in each of the, the places. And then this is probably my favorite, and this is the most magnetic love patch of them all, is the these, these guys. It's like this echoplex, swelly, delay thing and so it's an omnisphere patch as well i used a ton of omnisphere in this i use a ton of omnisphere in general it's called glitch oplex echo reverse 2 and if i just play it with my keyboard it just sounds like so it takes a while to come in but then it starts to just cascade and it just keeps going So really weird. Um, and so I ended up printing that. I want to be what I mean by that is I just recorded that MIDI, the MIDI instrument to audio, so that I could make sure it was in time. Because I don't think that it was necessarily consistent. So I just printed it and then made it to where it was basically ramping up on every um, on every what is that half note or something. So it comes in. So it starts on the one, adds the two, and the three. And it's just got a bunch of grit. I threw some chorus on there, a little bit of verb. And then we go, the verb actually turns off for the chorus. And so we go just dry. Um, and then it looks like there's, I'm taking out like a little low mid kind of stuff. So we come out of the verse. And then the verb's gonna turn off. And then we bring in the piano. And it's literally just this and piano. So it's nice and dry. Lots of focus on the vocal. And it's just weird, it's just eerie. Love that, I remember when we found that patch and was like, oh, this is the freaking one. Oops. Um, uh, and so, yeah, so that piano comes in, it's a really simple, it's just like a reason piano. I think it has like the Spitfire labs in it as well. It just sounds like this nice and gentle. Oh, I'm filtering it. it look, there's probably some automation for that. Oh, I turn off the filter later. And so in the bridge, the filter's off, but in this first chorus, I want it to be nice and dark, nice and mellow. Um, and then we've got this just Pro Tools plug-in tape echo. It's just a mono. You can hear it. Obviously, everything is mono to you guys. Absolute tear. Um, but it's just this tape echo thing. So you can you can make it, if you turn up the record level, it like adds all this grit. It's really cool. Um, so I'm going to undo that, bring it back to where I had it. But it's just a steady, what is that, eighth note, I think, or quarter note. It's really subtle. I can turn it up some. It's just kind of carrying that, you know, a little bit of compression. And it's like, 
it's kind of cool because it gives a mono element to these keys, which is just, you know, different. Cool. I'm not always going to do that, but felt right. And I remember just loving that plugin at the time. I should use it more. And then it's sending to this verb. Nice little, it's pretty long decay, pretty thick. A little, a little bit of EQ on it. So there's that, there's that chorus. It's literally just that. And then uh, when we get into the verse, let me check if there's any major questions. Okay, awesome. Let's just keep rolling. Um, <clears throat> so you guys all know what it sounds like when we get into the verse. It's pretty awesome. Um, it sounds like this is. These are like the final tracks, or these are the tracks that we use live. I'm just gonna solo them up. Sure. And I am found. So it just hits really hard. There's like delay on his voice. Like it just. It's super cool. Um, and so one of the ways we contributed to that was we had, um, this is one of my favorite little ARPs. Um, it's just like a great transitional element. I think it's like on the, the triplet. Um, but we go, you know, like, you have my, you have my attention. And here's this ARP. And that's what gets us into the verse. And then we have our, our main melody come back in. It's nice and bright now. The filter's open, nice and stereo. And then we have our little bell arp thing, just have like a do like a single hit, which is just one of the ambient like textures, you know? And it goes. Yeah. So that combined actually with this dulcimer. So this is when we get into some of our different like hook lead elements. Um, so that's happening with when he says, you have my, or, or, uh, you have my attention and he goes, and I am found. And on the I, we wanted to like, just accent that, ding, that high six. So it goes, have my attention. Ding. Yeah, just as fun. That ARP has a bunch of verb on it just to make it nice and patty, almost like. Um, yes, Dave, so the guitars, thank you very much. Yeah, Adam, Adam, our, our guitar player wants me to highlight this. Honestly, I will, man, if you want, if you want, um, if you want me to. Um, also there's some people asking about vocals. Um, I, I didn't mix this song. Uh, Aaron Broman mixed this song. And so you can ask him about vocals. I don't, thankfully, I don't really have to do a lot with vocals. I do, I do some mixing here and there, but it's, um, in this particular project, it was, didn't have to worry about it. Um, <clears throat> so now that we're in the verse, we got a couple things going on. So we have our little echoplex uh, swelly thing comes back in. Uh, our bass comes back in. As you can see, uh, there was potential for a bass in the chorus. But one of my kind of I guess you could call it a production philosophy is I feel like bass is a very useful tool in the sense of it can create, it's going to create dynamic between sections if it's in or not. Uh, and what I mean by that is, so we have bass in the verse, uh, verse one, and we have bass in verse two. It, it felt wrong to keep bass in the chorus as well because then it's like there's just not a lot of, yeah, there's just not a lot of um, change, right? And music is about change. Static, uh, one of my musical heroes says this, um, static isn't noise. So if if things aren't changing, it's not musical. It's just, or sorry, static is noise. <laughs> and static being obviously, you know, like radio static, but like static meaning lack of change. And so if things aren't changing, then it's really not that musical. It's just, it's just noise. So this is what it sounds like with bass in the verse in the chorus. It just doesn't, it's just more boring, I guess. Body, spirit, mind, and soul. I don't know how well you can hear that in your speakers. If you're not using headphones, maybe you should grab some. But I'm side chaining it, so it like has movement. But otherwise, it's just, it just sounds, it sounds so much cooler when the bass just drops out. 
So we go from lots of glow end to nothing. It's like it's like a vacuum. All of a sudden, sudden it's like sucked out, which is awesome. Um, anyway, let's get on to verse two. I uh, got off on a little tangent there. Um, before we do, let me just give a little check. Oh, someone else asked for a guitar solo. My bad, Adam. Um, haha, <laughs> can we hear the guitar? Yeah, I'm seeing now. Um, honestly, we can listen to guitars. Uh, we can talk about that for sure. Um, so verse two, so to be fair, there haven't been any guitars, um, up until this moment. Um, guitars first come in on verse two. So this, this guitar, um, comes in on verse two. Um, sorry, I'm dealing with all my groups. This guy right here. Heck yeah. And then that guitar on the right, which I know you guys can't hear the right, but whatever. Whoa! So sorry. That got real loud all of a sudden. My my little sequencer. Um here we go. So let's hop back to verse two, Keys World. You'll be able to hear the guitars in the reference, and then we can solo them out some later as well. Um, oh, it's because I have both of them on, maybe. Yeah. So sorry, everyone. Anyway, verse two comes in. It's fat. It's big. Our bass comes back in. It's awesome. That guy's still going. Love that. All right, so now on this reverse, um, two different things come in. We've got a lead. Of this little CP80 sound sounds super cool, um, like a little hook part, and then we have this sequencer come in, which is an Omnisphere sequencer doing a bunch of stuff to it. Chorus, a little bit of EQ, some delay, and some verb, and it's this uh, this like rhythm that I just came up with, and you can actually program it in Omnisphere. If you go to the ARP section have it play chords and then you can actually determine the length of like how it repeats. So on this particular one, it goes um eighth, 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 sixteenth, sixteenth, eighth, eighth, eighth. Right? Um and so I wanted that kind of sequencer feel. And so the end result sounds like this. Nice. That with the hook, these are the two elements that are changing, right? Um, so that's our little melody with it. The echo loop thing is still gone. And then we hit that pre-chorus kind of, I don't know if we ever called it that, where we change the progression from, you know, six, four, whatever, to we start on that one. So with everything. You me right? And so I wanted to accent that as well. So I made this little like stab thing. I think it's a reason patch. And I, I you know, have the stab just by itself. <laughs> it's just kind of cute and weird. And then I actually reversed it and kind of like had it come in on the downbeat because we hit like the do do ga. It's like an accent on the offbeat. Um, and so the reverse starts on the downbeat and it goes do ah. So like one, two, right? Um, so what that sounds like on together. Also, ooh ah. That was a good noise. Love that. So with the reference, actually, it's a big section, a uh, session, lots of scrolling. You pull me. Turn it down a little bit. Sorry. You me in. Right? Um, which is cool, <laughs> right? And then that sequencer comes back in. And then we have uh, the lead sound starts playing a different part. Um, and so with the, with the sequencer, there's that song. 
So it's just kind of accenting those chords a little more. Nice. Damn, there's that saw, love that. Um, and then we go from the verse, obviously, into the chorus. And so how are we gonna get to the chorus? Why, we're gonna reverse something again. Um, so we take that intro pad that's been droning, right? So it's been droning in the, the second verse as well. It actually comes out for the pre-chorus because we switch the progression from starting on the six to starting on the one. Um, so it's this sound is a little more ominous, right? And so um, I wanted to take it out because we are making that like kind of major flip. Um, yeah, so, and then, but I'm gonna bring it back in to get us into the chorus. Oh, so cool. Um, oh, that's something I didn't mention earlier. I'll mention super quickly. So the cool thing about that patch is it's actually got some like pitch modulation happening. Um, and so in it, in the way that Omnisphere works is for some of these, um, for some of these uh, patches, it's like it only, it plays it a different way every time. And so that's why a lot of times I'll print. And once again, when I say print, I mean um, take that MIDI instrument and record it to an audio track. So that's why a lot of times I'll print things pretty, like as soon as I hear the thing that I want, I'm like, oh, I don't know if it's going to play it that way again. So I'm just like kind of printing it. So it has, um, so it comes in. As soon, actually, it's, a, it's when the verse hits. You'll hear this. For me, it's on my, my right side. And for those of you watching back afterwards, on the right, it's like it goes from like a high octave and it drops like it's like this little pitch modulation down to the low octave. So it's just cool things like that. <laughs> Love that. Um, Desi just said I'm the CEO of pitch modulation. Honestly, love that. Um, All right, good question, Lincoln Bryant, my dog. Miss you. Um, how much do I quantize MIDI stuff? Adam's probably laughing right now because he makes fun of me because every time after I record a part, I just quantize it. Um, and he makes fun of me because he can't do that on guitar, uh, even though I still edit his guitars a little bit. Um, yeah, so short answer is I do quantize and I, I quantize just 100%. Unless it's meant to be more of like, a, a fr it kind of depends on the genre. So for like this, I want things to be on time, locked with the grid. Like we make sure our drums are really tight. We make sure our bass is really tight. Like all that stuff is nice and tight, right? And not every genre is like that. Um, so some things I'll quantize less uh, in the sense of like, maybe I'll still bring it towards the beat. Um, a little more, but not necessarily all the way on the grid. Uh, so it, it kind of, it's kind of genre specific. But for this song specifically, everything's everything's quantized 100%. Everything's locked on uh, to the grid. Um, so anyway, we were talking about chorus two. This, I'm always getting off on these tangents. Uh, but we get into chorus two, right? Our little intro pad takes us in, and our little bell art like textury thing does like a little hit. <laughs> And then we have our Echoplex. I just made it to where it starts to fade out. So I think I probably just let off on the keys and it naturally kind of decayed. And then there's that famous freaking Aaron, Aaron Broman sub bass. It sounds so awesome. I'll show you guys that solo. That's like, that's like the freaking sound of magnetic love as well to me with the drums, right? You have my attention. It's like a sub drop. And then those those drums come in, right? Heck yeah. That's a classic. That's a classic. Well done, Aaron, on that. Um, and then, so then this is a great part. This this section, the instrumental section, um, with the solo, right? And we have the the hits and the all of that goodies. Um you know, we have that down chorus and there's nothing happening, not even piano, it's just ambience, right? So our little pad swells in and then turns off and the bass kind of fades out, right, on the six. And so reverb's kind of carrying it. 
the echo plex is fading out, and then the bass comes in. And then the famous fill. So the, what I'm playing there is this um, Mellotron choir thing. What's it called? An Omni, Omnisphere. Real choir plus Tron choir. It sounds like a Mellotron to me. I think I may have blended a... Oh, yeah, I actually blended this organ thing in as well. Um, so by itself, it sounds like... Oh, I should, should play it. Oh, that's a... Uh, so sorry, guys, wrong one. Here we go. My bad. <laughs> so you can hear it has like that uh, portamento. Got to find my sustain pedal. That's what I'm playing, right? There's that one uh, with a nine. And then... Great patch. Freaking so cool. Got a little of this NLS bus. Basically, all that is, is um, it's like analog emulation. Um, and I talked about this actually in my last video. Um, nowadays, I would probably use the Sound Toys little radiator in its place. Um, but back then, I didn't have it. So um, this is just adding some saturation very lightly just to make it sound a little less digital, a little less computery. Um, so that comes in. That's really the only thing until the instrumental. And the instrumental is where like the guitar solo comes in. Oh, so big, so fat. Um, so I once again use that little ARP transition thing uh, to take us into the instrumental. So we're coming out of like the hits. Art. It's nice and subtle. I feel like you guys probably heard it, but it's just that. Oh, so nice. I'm sending that to a ping pong delay as well, just to give it some extra, some extra goodies. Um, then, so when we go into the actual instrumental, so those those pulses, those hits, was just the Mellotron choir thing. Um, then we go into the instrumental. And it is, that continues, the Mellotron choir thing. And then we have just like an organ come in. I wanted some brightness. Really standard organ. And it's sending to this verb, which I'm actually going to talk about this verb later because it's like, it is a classic, um, it is a classic Dave move. I have a special trick for those of you who want to stick around in store, uh, but it's it's definitely using one of those tricks. Uh, so that organ comes in and then this lead comes in and it just doubles the, um, it just doubles the solo. Uh, Adam didn't uh, didn't want it to be super hot in the mix, which I agree because it, it is a guitar solo and, but it's meant to just kind of add some um, punch to the, uh, like some attack to the notes that he's playing, right? So actually soloed, soloed with the solo, it sounds like this. So I'm not hitting all of his little things. I just wanna give some attack to those different notes. it all together and then our piano makes a reappearance so we haven't had piano this entire song except for that first chorus everything else is really synth based and then our piano comes back in on this bridge so the pads are the verb is still carrying out on the pads which is super cool so like they have like ni nice long tails and then our piano comes in when when this bridge happens So that quarter note delay, which is nice. We have our echoplex thing start coming back in. So it's gonna start creating a little anticipation. And then we have uh, the goodies, this this porta pad thing. Um, 
that is, I use it a lot in worship music as well, just to add some like, um, it's very dramatic. It's very, it feels very cinematic to me too. Like you can make it very interstellar kind of vibes. Um, so originally it sounded like, so I'm using, I'm doing some filter automation. Yeah. So, I, okay. So I'll talk about this. So it's being sidechained right now. So I can actually turn that off. It's just a little more boring with the piano. So it's, it's job is just to create some, it's starting to build, right? But I wanted to give it some movement. So I put some side chain on it. And then in, actually in Pro Tools, all you have to do is I'm just, I have this random kick. It's not actually in the mix. It's literally just, um, it's literally just meant to side chain. And so I'm just telling a compressor to, to listen to that kick. Um, so if we were to listen to it, I think it, does it work like this? Yeah. So that's what the kick sounds like, but it's actually just affecting the pad. So then I, I printed that. Um, and I'm just doing the filter automation. I've got some, some mid side compression on just to make it nice and wide. Um, but this is what it looks like. This is like the, actually the, the waveform, right? With, with the side chain. So you can see it like the kick hits and then it comes back up. So it's just giving it a lot of movement. It'll play. Oh, there we go. Oh, so, and then it's still sending to that big verb. And then uh, this, our, our friendly intro ARP comes back in with everything. Oh yeah. And here comes the bridge or the last chorus. And then for this last chorus, I wanted the piano to be nice and bright. So, cause you can, you know, we've been listening to this really mellow piano, which is awesome. It's really textured. It feels cool, fun, all those good things. But for this last course, I needed the piano to actually kind of cut through the mix and not just be low mid noise and rumble. So we come out of using this mellow piano to a nice bright piano in the last course. Nice compress, really big. What am I doing? I've got the echo on it as well. It's a lot more subtle. I didn't want it to be as, and then wow, it is getting smashed. Sorry, Aaron, I sent you a really smash piano. What's new? So it's literally just that. The big pad, the filter's all the way open now. Ugh. Hear what I mean about cinematic? Like, that's just, it sounds like you're in space, and my dream is to go to space. So, um, fun fact. Um, and then I actually, that little transitional art that we've been using, I was like, you know what, what the heck, we're just gonna play chords and have it do its thing. So this is just happening all across the last chorus. You have my attention. Oh, so cool. Lots of movement, really fun. Frick, yeah, that's so good. Um, so with, with everything, it sounds like we come out of that bridge. Oh yeah, that was the, so the piano starts following the melody. That pat, like this thing, ah, it changes the game. Down. All right, this is what I wanted to talk about here. So you hear that distortion? That is the freaking, I think this is one of the first times I ever did this. 
Um, and I'm so glad I did because now I do it all the time. And I talked about it in the last video as well. But just putting distortion or saturation after your effects, after your reverb, after your whatever, instead of – so that way instead of putting verb on a saturated element, which is cool, you're actually saturating the entire thing. So without, without the – um, so if we were to put, actually, I'm just going to, for example's sake. So here's our pad, right? At the very end, it starts to filter down, right? So we're filtering it with just like a low pass filter. Nice and boring, right? So that's with no saturation at all. That's just verb. We have a nice big long verb as well, like six and a half second decay. So say we put actually this, the saturation or the distortion before the verb, what would it sound like? Definitely still cool. Like it definitely gives it some grit. But this is what it sounds like with, I've got this just Manium distortion after our verb. This is the trick, y'all. You wanted to know the Dave trick? I mean, this is one of them for sure. Um, it's go source, verb, distortion. And it sounds like this at the end. You hear that? Oh, it's so subtle. I don't know if Instagram's compression or like the live, like if you can actually hear that. But if you listen to the song on Spotify, like that ending is made the way it is because of the fact that this distortion is after the verb. Like that's the, that's the reason why it sounds this way. Oh, it's nice and gritty. It's not boring. It's not like a boring tale of like, oh, the reverb faded out. It filtered down. Let's all go home. It's like, no, this, this song is over, but it's like you don't want it to be over. You're holding on. Oh, so nice. Um, so that's that. And then this is great. I'm doing great on time. I spent so much time on every little thing last time. Um, let me see if there's any other elements I wanted to hit. Um, I will. I do want to. I hope the boys don't get mad at me for this. I don't think they will, but let's see. <laughs> I do really quickly. Oh, I had some reverse pianos I didn't talk about. Um, so these are some other, what do you know? We're doing a reverse thing. Oops, my bad. Um, I took, so I took our piano, right? We're going, uh, this is, um, we're jumping back in the song a little bit. So sorry if uh, you're getting uh, confused. Um, but I am, I am wrapping up. Um, but some, something I forgot to mention was these little reverse pianos. And so, um, out of the first chorus, you know, we have our piano going, right? Body, spirit, mind, and soul. Body, spirit, mind, and soul. You have my attention. Reverse piano. Nice. So we do a little bit of EQ. Very cool. Do the same thing going into um, chorus two. Oh, it just gives a nice little like cliffhanger ending thing. Um, cool. But the thing I wanted to say that the boys might get mad at me for, but I don't think they will. I think we'll be okay. Is I wanted to show you guys we actually play this song a little differently live, and there's just some I've I've added a couple tracks at this point. Um, cause we, we're actually coming up. I feel like, I don't remember when we released Magnetic Love, but it's like a year ago. Um, and so I was, I was working on this song. I actually looked at my like session, whatever. And the last time it was opened was like February of 2019. And so that was, you know, just over a year ago. Well, I guess, you know, a year and a month now. Um, and so obviously you know, taste change, taste, I still love this song, but like, as, as you're learning more, like, especially when you're, when you have the capability to play something different and just like do little things and change things, like, why not? Like, so we're fortunate enough to most of the time when we're playing live shows, like we're, we're able to run backing tracks and stuff. And so we can run different things like, you know, like perk tracks and I'll show you some of the perk tracks that we have here. And, um, and like synth bass uh, tracks. And I'd love to play synth bass live one day, but a lot of times it's layering under a real bass as well. So I'm playing real bass and then the tracks are playing a 
synth bass. Oh, hey, Paul. Welcome. <laughs> um, but yeah, all that to say, we've we've been fortunate enough to be in a spot where we can actually um, like add elements to our songs, which is super awesome. Um, and so I want to show you some of those elements um, that we've added. And um, starting with this one. Oh, where is it? Oh, there we go. Wrong thing. I'm like, I was like, frick, I don't have it. Um, so a couple things. I added like these church bells, right? So like the church, like the Notre Dame, Notre Dame, whatever. Like that's that's what I had in mind. Like very epic kind of sounding. Um. <laughs> and it just, uh, I added those on the instrumental and then like the final chorus. Just because I was like, I feel like this will make the song hit like a different way. So with everything, and these are, now I'm, I'm showing you guys this actual stem so the mix might be super off and I'm so sorry. So let's just see what it, this sounds like. Oh, it's definitely a lot darker. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'll just turn those up a lot so you can really hear them when they hit. So we're coming out of those those hits, right? So we have the first time they show up is the. You got some perk goodies to you. I'll show you. So there's that bell on the left side. Very cool. And then it hits again, just like halfway through. Duh. That's a three that time. So the first time is a six, the second time is a three, just for fun. Um, and then some different perk elements that I added on this section were um, these guys. So I'll sell them up with like the bass and the drums or something. Um, so we have the... So just a clap to accent that part where we come in. Then a little reverse clap, goody. And then just like a swell boom kind of vibe. So those aren't in the actual record, but that's what we play live. And then the other thing I wanted to show you guys is actually what we do. Um, uh, coming out of the bridge into the last chorus. And by the way, we actually play at a BPM faster just to give it some extra juice, but that's either neither here nor there. Um, so coming out of the that bridge, we've got a couple things going, right? So we have... So we decided just to make it more fun and do a stop. Hell yeah. Oops. That's so good. What about the major three and chorus one? Uh, I can I can show them that, Adam. Sorry, Adam's telling me all the other things we do live. I don't want to give them away all our secrets, you know. Anyway, um, so what's going into that little stop is we've got a little percussion thing. Right? So it just like... Um, and then we've got, uh, a, a sub drop cause why not? And then, so, um, um, and then Adam's doing this bend, right? Which really contributes. Woo. That's freaking noise. And then, like along with the slide part. And then in keys world, what we're doing is I added this, um, this portamento on the seven. The Wait. Wait, well, sorry. Well, so it sounds like, uh, oh, I didn't have it soloed, so sorry. I'll solo it with the vocals so we know what's going on. I'm coming after you. Oh, Holy Spirit. And then with the church bell, I should really just sell all these things. Woo! 
Sounds freaking awesome. So once again with everything, just because I think it sounds freaking fat. Massive last chorus. Thank you so much, everybody. We're Gable Price and Friends. Um, Cam wanted me to tell you guys, I mean, you're all reading it. It's not like I'm the only one reading this. But uh, the major two at the very end was actually an accident, and it was Cam's fault. And we're very thankful for him to do that because it sounds awesome. Um, ending on that. We're in the key of C, so ending on D major. <laughs> That's good. That's good stuff. I'm going to show you guys one more thing that we do live. Uh, I'll have to play it. But um, if you have questions, now's the time to type them in. I'll scroll through and all that good stuff. But uh, in chorus one, so I'll, um, I'm going to have to play it, but I don't have any of these pianos queued up. Hold on. Got to figure this out. Here we go. <laughs> I can play it on this one. I don't have... Um, I don't have a uh, Pro Tools and Reason and all them. They they're coming out with like their solution to use Reason with Pro Tools in May, um, and so I can't use any of my reason my Reason patches in Pro Tools right now. So I'll just have to show you the Spitfire one. Oops, so sorry. So this is um, this is Spitfire Labs Great Free Piano. Sounds awesome. Oh, we're very high up, aren't we? So this is half of the sound. Um, and then I get some more like body from a, just a normal piano that I've like layered in with it. So normally this is what the chorus sounds like, right? Body, spirit, mind, and soul. Body, spirit, mind, and soul. You have my attention. And so what uh, what I've done live a couple times just for fun and just to be funny, but it's also fun, is do you, oh, I have to mute this, my bad. Body, spirit, oh, that's quiet. Mind and soul. Body, there it is. Spirit, mind One. And, soul. You and then I'll do a major three here. <laughs> Never done that. Boom! What a fun song. So glad we made it. That's a good one. Um, Guys, thanks again so much for joining. Let me scroll through some of these. I'm about to be cut off, so I just want to... <coughs> actually say goodbye before I'm forced off. Um, but this was really fun. I love, like I said, I love this song. It's one of my, one of my favorites we've done. Uh, I will say though, this new album, this new record is going to have a lot of favorites. Um, so be on the, be on the lookout for that because it's going to be awesome. Um, but let's see if there's any good cues. Um, oh, a good place to find, uh, sound effect like SFX risers and swells, or do you make them? Uh, a little, um, a little bit of both. Um, I mean, you can get really basic and re just get a noise generator. Like, you know, Omnisphere has one. I'm sure every DAW has a synth that can just make noise, and then just record a literally record a, um, you know, five seconds of noise or something, and then literally just automate a filter to open and then close and then um and then put a bunch of verb on it and that's that's a good start right there cuz then it'll just sound like and it'll have a bunch of verb on it and that'll be cool so that's a good place to start 
Um, or honestly, I've looked up on Google just like free sound effects or risers or like audio risers or production swells or whatever, just like, you know, stuff like that. Um, someone says sounds more like the key of A minor. Um, I mean, you're not wrong. The key of C and the key of A minor are, you know, at least in my world, the same key because they're just relative to one another. Uh, but you're right because the A minor is kind of where we're starting and ending and stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Am I using Pro Tools? Yes, this is Pro Tools with Omnisphere, Reason, some other... Yeah, some other goodies. Um, awesome. Well, thanks so much for, for joining. Um, I wish you all the best. And uh, stay safe out there. <laughs>